What's up everybody? So we're out in the shop and today we're going to be working on the 5160 EDC knife right here. This is the one that we took the leaf spring material, flattened it, and then textured it with the hammer. So put that hammered finish on there. Now we're going to be attaching these handle scales right here. They're kind of like a man-made antler style material. We're going to be putting these scales on this knife. We're going to shape them. We're going to sharpen this knife and finish it completely in this episode. So guys, go ahead, sit back, relax. Let's jump into this. Let's get this knocked out. So we're going to start off by drilling our holes in our scales. Now this was a little bit harder to do because these scales are rounded where they meet the work rest. So I had to keep it even the whole entire time and pay attention to it. And then what I ended up doing was I used the first scale that I drilled through as a guide to do the other side so that the pins lined up and it made it easier for whenever it came time to do the glue up for everything to line up right. Now before I have it glued up I'm going to go ahead and remove a lot of the excess so that I don't have to worry about that after the glue up. So we're just kind of getting it ground down to be close to the size of the tang. We're going to leave a little bit of excess, but it is very minimal. So that's all we're doing right here. We're just kind of getting rid of the bulk of this. Now, I will tell you, this stuff smells like toenails. It is definitely not one of the uh, better smelling materials that I work with. And the dust is very fine. Uh, it just goes everywhere. Uh, kind of like micarta, but smells way worse than micarta. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and focus on the front of the scales where they're going to meet the ricasso. So this is just the area that's going to be right at the ricasso. And you can't mess with this once it's glued up because you'll end up messing up your ricasso area and scratching your blade. So I went ahead and just kind of rounded it a little bit. I didn't want to make it too round or too angled because I, just aesthetically I, I want the focus to be on the flats of the scales. So I just made sure I had put a little bit of a bevel on it and then rounded it over while hand sanding it. Now, while hand sanding it, I used 220 grit, 320 grit, and 500 grit on the front of that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use our acetone and clean everything. So anything that's going to be touching each other, we're going to go ahead and give it a good cleaning so that we have the best mechanical bond that we could possibly get. And we're going to go ahead and mix our two-part epoxy. This is JB Weld 5-Minute Epoxy. You just want to make sure that you're only mixing enough to be able to glue this up. You definitely don't want to go too crazy and just mix way more than you need. And a lot of this is going to come with practice and knowing how much you should have. And what we're going to do is we are going to coat everything before we start putting it together. This way you don't have to go around the pins or anything like that. It makes it a lot easier and a lot faster to be able to do your glue up. So coat all the flats and then start doing your pins and putting it together. It makes it a lot easier. I went ahead and added a little epoxy around the little areas because I got a little idea on how I'm going to shape the handles, but we're going to see how it works out. And I'll, I'll talk to you about that in a little bit, whenever I get to that point. Now once you clamp these up, make sure you're not clamping too hard. You're not trying to squeeze out all the epoxy. Uh, and whatever epoxy you do squeeze out towards that ricasso area, 
you're just going to clean up with some acetone on a paper towel. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to grind off the excess pin material so that we can start shaping and contouring. And uh, I'm using these bright orange gloves really just because I didn't want to get this all over my hands. <laughs> but all I'm going to do is focus on making sure that I'm putting it in my hand multiple times while I'm shaping this because these scales are quite a bit different than what I normally work with and I just want to make sure that they're comfortable because they are textured pretty aggressively and I want to make sure that you're not getting any hot spots or you know uncomfortableness while you're holding it but what I'm going to do with this is just kind of shape it and figure it out as I go uh, the scales were quite a bit different on either side so again it was just play it by ear now what I'm doing right here is I'm actually grinding into the pins where those little grooves are and I'm shaping the pins to match the grooves that's why I did the epoxy the way I did I wanted to make sure that all the little areas around the pins were perfectly glued because I was going to grind in and I wanted to make sure I didn't have any weird edges or anything like that uh, on the outsides of the pins. Now again like I was saying this was all purely just kind of see how the shape was going to turn out as I'm going. I, I had an idea of the, you know, the profile and shape of the handles that I wanted and I just kind of made that fit this particular material as much as I could. Now, if you're wondering what belt I was using, that was a 40 grit belt, a ceramic one. Um, it worked out real well. And then I'm using a 80 grit drum right here to really work on this. It puts a good finish on the steel itself plus while putting a nice smooth finish on the scales and I like doing this because it starts removing the hard grinding lines from the 2x72 so that whenever I start hand sanding it's not as hard and I don't have to do as much of it plus this is going to let me start really radiusing and rounding all of the little edges going all the way around it and putting a nice smooth contour on the scales. So it's a really cool shape and uh, definitely unique. Now I had to go through and focus on the little bitty areas while hand sanding this so that I could bring those pins up to the the right finish because if I would have just sanded flat on these scales all of the areas where I ground into the pins to make them follow those grooves that are in the scales those would have been real rough and had grinding lines in it and then the tops would have been real polished and I wanted to make sure that everything had a nice similar sheen to it I've never polished this material, so it's just, again, completely winging it. I uh, went all the way up to 1,000 grit on this handle, by the way. Now we're going to use a white buffing compound on a fine wheel, and we're just going to get after the polishing on this. And after these first couple of little passes, I was absolutely surprised at how this started buffing. I mean, it took an amazing sheen to it. So, really, really, really surprised and absolutely <laughs> just am amazed by this material. Now, I don't know if I'll ever work with it again because the smell is horrible, but the finish that you get on it is amazing. And I'll show y'all more of that in the outro, but it's absolutely awesome what you could do with this stuff. 
Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our cutting edge with a 400 grit ceramic belt on the 2x72 and this is just going to help us really get that cutting edge set to where we want it and then once we get that done we're going to go over to the 600 grit on the 1x30 and just kind of refine the edge a little bit and smooth it out and put a nice finish on it and a lot of this is just taking your time and making sure you're keeping that consistent bevel as you're going this belt right here is an 800 grit belt and I'm going with the rotation on this one you don't have to do that it's just a personal preference and again, we're just refining that edge, getting a nice burr so that when we're using this leather stropping belt right here, we can take that burr off and leave that nice razor sharp edge. And it is absolutely sharp. And if you didn't think that shaving sharp was enough, there you go. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up today's video with some of this. For one, y'all saw how sharp it was. It's super freaking sharp. It'll shave. It will absolutely slice paper no issues whatsoever i know how this holds an edge i've done so many 5160 knives and i do the same exact heat treat process each entire or each time and these hold an edge insanely well you know i've done choppers out of it i've done so many different things for just an edc knife this is going to keep its edge for a very long time but check out how this thing turned out we got an insane polish on that. Got that hammered finish. What I did different on this one versus some of my other knives, you know, typically the knives are really smooth. I actually shaped the pins to go with the grooves that are uh, in this material. So there is actual grooves sanded into the pins so they follow all the way through. You see there's a, a groove going right through this pin. And I still got a mirror polish on them. <laughs> I, I love this. Now, one of the things that is a little bit weird for me is the fact that they're not completely mirrored on both sides because this is a material that's not made that way. It's not, it didn't come out as just a flat rectangle. It had contour and shape to it. and You kind of just make the handle fit how you want it to fit but it turned out so awesome it's got a nice polish on it I really like the contrast between the handle material and the blade I am super happy with this I, I'm really interested in what y'all think about it so please go down in the comment section and tell me what y'all think about how this turned out me personally I cannot be happier that is just a beautiful setup <sighs> now I want to make one of these for myself uh guys this is awesome hopefully again y'all liked it if y'all did get this video a thumbs up share this video or one of my other videos and make sure you subscribe to the channel we've got a bunch of stuff coming up a bunch of stuff all kinds of things so guys thank y'all for coming by thank y'all for spending your time with me y'all have an amazing day y'all stay safe out there i'll catch y'all next time